give a virtual round of applause, say yes, <laughs> or mag-chat tayo, no? To our first speaker, si Raymond Abad. Hi, Raymond. Hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I hope you can hear me clearly. Good evening to everyone. And uh, also, uh, thank you to FNF Philippines for inviting me to this webinar. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, you'd be able to get some useful information for uh, for your uh, videos that you're doing. Um, so the flow of this presentation, which is uh, which will discuss the climate change and impact to the transport system, and some introduction to sustainable transportation. Um, I'll just divide this quickly into three parts. So I will introduce first uh, our current or my current organization of Clean Air Asia. And then I will also uh, talk about some uh, some of the research that I've done or that I did before before joining Cleaner Asia. So major related then just the discussions Kanina and our experience this afternoon, something on public transportation and flooding. And then later on, I will discuss something about uh, sustainable transportation. So basically, what we can do, you know, or what we. Uh, have to pursue in the future so that these impacts of uh, climate change to the transport system um, could be uh, mitigated. So, yeah. Um, so, Cleaner Asia, we are an international uh, non government organization. So, it initially it was set up in 2001, basically with uh, a mission of, air, of Asia, Asian cities without uh, air pollution. So, it was established first by the Asian Development Bank in 2001. And ever since uh, 2008, we're working as a separate non, uh, nonprofit. Um, our mission, as we've mentioned, is uh, reduce air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions in Asia and contribute to the, the development of a more sustainable, equitable, and healthier region. And um, our vision is a world with clean air, blue skies, and a stabilized climate for people and the planet. So for us to, to do this, to, to live by our mission and vision, uh, we have two main thrusts or two main programs. So uh, I'm part of the sustainable transport uh, team, a diverse team working on various sustainable transport initiatives. And there's also an air quality and climate change, uh, uh, climate change uh, program. So for the sustainable transport team, we usually have three main focus areas. We focus on clean fuels and vehicles, green freight and logistics, and low emissions urban development. But we try our best to tie this all up in, in, and relate this no, into developing sustainable transport plans or programs for uh, for cities or countries that are uh, interested. So we do this in various activities. We conduct research, data, provide tools. Um, we assist government, whether at local or national level, in crafting policy reforms. But what's important is we also capacitate our decision makers so that they would be able to make uh, informed decisions then. So for the for uh, for tonight, I will discuss basically the avoid, shift, and improve framework. And um, you will hear more about this later, but the idea of you know, avoid, shift, and improve. So aside from the usual um, the usual approach of planning na nakasanayan natin na it's more of traffic-oriented, moving streets, uh, moving, moving cars on our roads, on our streets. We also, um, we want to shift yung, um, shift yung approach natin in making our transport system more sustainable. No? So we do this by avoiding or reducing travel, yung mga unnecessary travel natin, shifting from, shifting from uh, carbon intensive modes, meaning yung mataas yung mga emissions natin, we go away from that. And then improve the efficiency of vehicle technology and fuels. So um, if we can't 
help it but use uh, yung mga vehicles natin uh, we we try to improve its efficiency so that its harmful effects to the environment are limited so and dami no um are we we just we, we don't just work locally we also work in various uh, countries as well because the issue of um air pollution uh, is not limited to the philippines no so marami din ang ang gusto masolusyonan yung air pollution and we also do this at regional levels mga asean or with fellow asian countries as well we provide policy guidance our website is full of um different uh different knowledge uh, materials that are available and we also do some capacity building activities no in in various government institutions and we also engage um the community as well no because of course everyone is affected by you know air quality issues and here are some of the activities that we do as well uh, when we do some capacity building so we try to map yung mga air quality um yung air quality monitoring natin i don't know if you've noticed no yesterday parang hindi rin talaga maganda yung 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 skyline natin medyo it was a bit dark and at some point parang medyo naging orange pa no medyo related din talaga siya sa air pollution so um we we when we do capacity building we assist governments in doing emissions inventory identifying saan ba nanggagaling to mga mga yung mga sources of pollution na to okay. so but why do we do this now aside from the impacts to the environment so um I'm not sure if I'd be able to pose a question for everyone here, but the reality of of reality of air pollution doesn't is not just limited to the environment. It also affects our health. You no, know, in 2019, air pollution contributed to around seven million deaths worldwide. So, because of poor air uh, poor air quality, you no, know? and some of those sources come from Uh, PM 2.5, seven percent of that, and later on, we will see that the transport, the emissions natin from transport contribute to this PM 2.5. And if we're going to, uh, pagi natin yan to other, to other respiratory illnesses and 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 cardiac uh, cardiac related illnesses. So may kita na lang, as much as, as low as least 19%. percent, no. Um, may relation no yung deaths that are attributable to total air pollution so you know it's also yung um you still wearing masks when going outside um it's still useful no kahit yung sa covid if if you're it, even if if um we're, we're moving past yung sa covid pandemic already um it's still useful because of the um new emissions na ano natin because some of these emissions actually go straight into our blood into our bloodstream and if you look at this chart it's not just you know if you look at it you you'll see that the impacts would be the young ones and the uh, and the old uh, old age groups you no know? but if you're pregnant or even those yung mga buntis yung mga babies din apektado because uh, again no yung mga yung dumidiretso sa loob ng katawan natin so in the philippines um you will notice that the 10 top 10 risk factors have not changed mostly bumaba yung air pollution from 2009 to 2019 but what we need to point out here is that if you look at yung ibang risk factors natin yung other nine those are behavioral pero how could we be able to control the air we breathe no? so yung issue of air pollution so it's not just an individual issue no it also affects those that are uh, surrounding us so aside from health um of course yung pollutants that we uh we put out into the air you emit into the atmosphere also have impacts to climate change so of course we already know this ever since we're young no tinuturo sa atin yung concept ng 
uh, yung greenhouse gas emissions and how it affects um, yung climate change. Napag-uusapan na rin yung increase in global average temperatures. No? Um, yung meron, that's why we have some targets that we have to uh, limit it to 1.5 degrees or else magpapatuloy na talaga yung impacts ng climate change. And these impacts of climate change, um, yung changes you know, sa mga weather conditions natin, whether it could be too hot or too cold, could also have some impacts also in, in some of yung health situation din natin. You know, because uh, yung, um, some areas would be less, uh, less habitable because of the temperature. Um, not just to humans, but also to some species. Pag na-affect yung, din yung biodiversity natin because of climate change, but also affect humans also, yung mga sources of food natin. So, nagtutuloy-tuloy siya. Okay. So, again, you have to understand the most vulnerable are most affected. And if we look at it, um, the uh, this graph shows that Yung transport emissions also are also the same no coming from different industries. So yung mga pollutants natin, those that affect air quality and those that affect uh, the climate in general, basically come from similar sources. But tonight I'll just talk about yung transport lang, transport emissions lang tayo. So to round up, bakit natin, uh, why do we have to push for environment, environmentally friendly uh, transport system? Why do we need to push for a sustainable transport? Because of these impacts to our health and, of course, to the environment. So what do we need to do generally? If I'm going to uh, summarize the call to action at them. First, we need to look for more energy-efficient systems. Of course, try to shift away from yung gamitin natin, yung mga, uh, those that are, you know, parang sourced from yung cleaner sources natin. If you're, we try to reduce our consumption of fuel and other sort resources. So if you're using your cars, uh, try to avoid using it, especially for unnecessary trips. Um, if you're going to use it also, try to, in, you know, engage in, uh, car sharing, car po and carpooling as well, or basically just use public transport as well. Okay? And these also have some co-benefits as well to us. No? If, we, if we reduce our consumption, uh, we will have less costs. And again, may co-benefits din siya um, for the environment and our personal health. Okay? Um, in terms of transport, so, punta lang ako diretso sa traffic emissions and air pollutant contributions. So, ano ba yung difference ng dalawa? Yung emissions, ito yung mga polluting substances na lumalabas din sa tailpipe. And usually na may measure natin yan. Um, if you register your vehicles, di ba, meron tayo mga, uh, mga, um, mga, mga, mga system to check the emissions also. Um, meron din tayong um, pollutant concentrations. Ito yung sinusukat ng mga air quality monitors natin. Yung DNR has this. Meron sila website. You can see also yung mga air quality nila. And ito rin yung monitor natin. I don't know if you also have that in your weather apps sa phone. Med tinitignan nila yung mga air quality, uh, yung air quality con conditions as well. And these are important because as you can see in, in this figure, yung emissions natin, yung pollutant natin, malaki ang nanggagaling sa transport. Okay? And if you check yung mga uh, documents natin, uh, check some studies, a lot of the emissions really come from the transport sector. Kaya dapat marami tayong um, ginagawa sa transport. So, let's try to bridge this to yung issue natin on climate change. Ano ba yung mga nagiging impact ng Pag hindi natin nakokontrol yung mga emissions natin from the transport sector mostly to yung climate situation natin. So before I joined Clean Air Asia, so my research in the university focused on the impacts of public transport and flooding. And I did this because of 
my experience as a commuter, a public transport user during Ondoy. So, med- medyo at the risk of <laughs> revealing my age from my college experience so, sa Ondoy. So, um, there are many studies already that um, have indicated that yung isa sa pinakamalaking impact ng climate change sa Pilipinas natin is yung rainfall. Uh, yung mga bigla ang sobrang taas or sobrang uh, sobrang bigat or sobrang dami ng rainfall or yung mga um, monsoon rains na kala mo parang bagyo siya or yung mga mga extreme weather events just like on Doi wherein yung rainfall non-stop. Okay? So this has the greatest impacts in the country. And there have been recent evidence that shows that yung yung in, yung mga intense na pag-ulan mas nagiging frequent siya more recently. Okay? So ano yung mga nagiging effect nito sa travel as a commuter? And all of us could generally relate to this. One, it affects our departure times. We, you know, it's either we leave earlier or we leave later leading to some instances where we get late dun sa mga commitments natin. We miss classes, di ba? Um, others, yung nawawalan tayo ng public transport options because some transport modes become very inconvenient to use or for some reason, biglang kumakonti rin yung public transport options kahit maulan. So it's widely studied in the US, in northern Sweden, and in Japan. So laging ganito yung nangyayari. Yung behavior nag-iiba. So nag-iiba ng sinasakyan, nag-iiba ng uh, oras ng pag-alis, or generally, it also affects public transport use. Yung convenience of public transport use also. And kapag nag-shift ka na from public transport to private transport, basically you also contribute already to the emission. So, para nagkakaroon siya ng cycle, which is why we need to improve our transport services as well. So, ayan, in some instances, it decreases bus ridership. And for others, umiiwas because of unfavorable weather conditions. But in the Philippines, it's very, it's usual, no? Parang, I got these pictures um, from my research three years ago and and. I think you can still have these same issues, no? Yung, yung picture dun sa top right, yung part na you would have to cross yung, yung, mga, yung mga makeshift na bridges. Tapos sa dulo, you have to pay this toll para hindi ka mabasa. Or sometimes you would have to use yung mga tricycles natin or pedicabs natin because we don't want to walk on flooded areas. So may mga ganong instances din talaga. So in our findings before, in my research, um, kahit mababa lang yung mga paha, ang impact niya, malaki pa rin. No? Almost half nag-iiba yung behavior. Okay? Kasi ayaw na, syempre, ayaw din natin naman lumusong basta-basta sa baha. Okay? And what is the impact for travel? So yung usual na one and a half hours na travel time, during normal travel conditions, nagigay almost two hours for an increase by almost 45 to 46%. So, ang laki ng impact. No? And imagine if, you know, yung, 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 you still have other commitments to do this, uh, to, uh, for, you know, for other things. No? If you have a family to come home to, diba? if you have, you know, if you have kids, or kung meron pa kayong assignment or homework na hindi naman matatapos, ang daming impact because all of this maapektuhan. I mean, for some, no, sabi nga, uh, for some, no, some of you are stranded. So, uh, ganun pa rin yung situation. And it's still a challenge, no, um, because mid, it's itong period na to dreaded to for students. So, what more pa sa mga workers natin, no, because they don't usually get suspended dun sa mga sa mga trabaho nila. So, ano nangyayari sa transport? Now, sometimes, we have no choice but to use informal transport services. So, yung mga pedicab na hindi nyo sila napapansin before, bigla siyang nagiging, nagagamit nyo siya ngayon because hindi siya tumitirek. 
especially yung iba, tinutulak lang or pinapadyak kayo. So, ang laki bigla ng mga nagiging use ng mga ibang transport options na yun. And even research has shown that, no, that there is this versatility in ferrying people. And I think there's also a meme before na parang on sunny days, it's 20, tapos 120 kapag maulan. But it's still useful. We still need those uh, transit services. And travel time, minsan, gusto natin umiwas. If you're using a car, you know where the flooded areas are. You will have to sometimes take circuitous routes. You must malayo yung ikot. So, kahit maliit lang yung affected na may baha, we have a laki ng impact niya dun sa network, sa buong transit network natin sa Pilipinas. So, if you want to read more about it, um, we did the research on how it affected uh, transit users in Metro Manila. And one thing that, um, that we really found interesting there is that commuters, your transit users, really do not have that much of a choice. So, minsan, um, you, you will expect na they would do some changes na para mag adjust sila. Pero, what if ito lang yung public transit option na available sa kanila? Which is the case um, more often than not. So, ayun, napipilitan sila. So, uh, napipilitan sila dun sa ganun situ situation. So, what can we do if if we have already established this um, relationship ng transport emissions and um, transport emissions and uh, and its impact to climate change. So this is where sustainable transport interventions uh, would have to come into play. So we always ask this question, no? if your tummy is getting bigger, what do you do? And we all know that the answer should be um, options B, C, or D. And, but the easiest answer would be A, you know, buying bigger clothes. Um, in the context of sustainable transport um, initiatives or interventions, we should always try to answer this by um, addressing yung key issues talaga. Okay? So that's also the same for transport. What do we need to do so that we can reduce transport emissions and its impact to the environment and climate change? So ito yung nabanggit ko kanina, no? Yung avoid, shifting, and improving. Okay? So when we say avoid, it's mostly encouraging people to travel uh, smaller distances or, or less distance. Uh, iwasan natin yung napakalayo. So this means kailangan siya na, kailangan mag, it's a planning idea wherein everything should be accessible to us. Okay? And then shifting, it means we encourage the shift from private car to public transport or non-motorized transport, right? And then improving, if we can't help it, we make the vehicles more, um, more efficient, right? So I'll just give some example in the, examples in the interest of time. One of the examples here is telecommuting, yung mga work from home. Um, we saw this in the impact of working from home during the first few first weeks and months of the extended ay, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng e? Eh, yung, yung ECQ, I forgot what the E stands for, enhanced community quarantine. So, um, nakita agad natin yung effect na dun sa environment. No? Yung, yung, um, yung naging clearer yung skies, we can see yung as far as Antipolo and then yung sa Bataan, malinaw na malinaw. But because what it does is it alleviates or lumuluwag talaga. So walang, excuse, walang rason yung tao lumabas. So if there is no, um, kung, if everyone's staying home, no one's on the road, no one's, no one's um, the transport emissions are lower. Pero eventually, habang nakita natin, lumuluwag na ulit yung mga restrictions, when people are coming out, the next question is, ano na yung ginagamit nila? Diba? Kaya important ng time na yun yung efforts natin towards um, cycling. And I think our friends from Alt Mobility here would be happy to share more about that. Okay? So, ang challenge ngayon for telecommuting, no? if we're going to um, promote telecommuting, uh, we should still encourage the use of public transport and non-motorized transport. 
because if we're if we're still using our private cars kahit naka telecommute ka yung impacts nun parang in offset mo rin I mean di ka nga nag lumabas gumamit ng kotse for for work pero you still used it for other things no? so um, we don't uh, we need to kumbaga combine it with other interventions and dito papasok yung shift okay shifting to um, more sustainable more sustainable and energy efficient transport modes we use public transport you know in the case of the in metro manila we're lucky no mataas yung public transport shares natin na 70% the minimum so we still need to encourage this by improving yung public transport natin ensuring yung connectivity no mga transport modes natin kasi imagine you know sometimes um kunwari ngayong umulan minsan yung buong trip natin na did disrupt just because of one section that is flooded. Na wala tayong choices. So, yung connectivity ng transport services natin is also important. And then also, in terms of cycling, what's important here in this slide and sa right side is that tumataas. Many people, there's an increased uptake because we support it by giving uh, cycling facilities. Diba? And if we want to, uh, to in further increase this, we need the infrastructure as well. Okay? So just aside from you know building these roads, these expressways, we also need to consider also the other users. Okay? In terms of improving yung mga vehicles natin, so marami tayong mga technologies that are available in our cars today. So right now, lahat ng mga sasakyan natin have these um, filters, those particulate filters that its main purpose is to remove yung mga particulate matter na yan uh, para hindi maging ganito yung puso. There's also some uh, nire-require yan na um, may mga technology na kasama sa vehicles natin. Also, yung uh, yung nagiging um, dumarating na ngayon, yung electric mobility. No? I don't know if you've seen in some car parks that there are already some electric uh, EV chargers already to encourage the use of electric vehicles as well. And not just electric vehicles, but we also have um, electric public transport. You have your e-trikes. You also have your e-bikes. So those, um, those uh, personal mobility devices that also support the mobility needs of um of young people across all sectors so finally there's also something that we could do in terms of um how we drive no yung driving behavior natin also have some impacts on the consumption of fuel and also the type of vehicles that we that we choose so um, let's also be mindful of that. No, you can ask your car manufacturers. No, what, um, what is the fuel consumption? The average fuel consumption of these vehicles. So, para rin maging aware tayo. Um, so in some countries they have labels. No, parang nakalagay don, parang nakapaskil sa sasakyan na parang how much does this vehicle consume for this distance? So, um, it promotes yung uh promotes yung consumer behavior na for them to make some uh, more sustainable uh, choices. Diba? So that would be all for my presentation. So I hope I gave a, a good connection between transport emissions, its impact to the climate, how it affects us as commuters, and what we can do about it. So if you have questions as well, please uh, feel free to email me. The email is right there and also our organization at Cleaner Asia. Thank you very much.